What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, bringing you incredible guests from all over the world. So sit back, relax, and tune in. My next guest is a storytelling NLP trainer, speaker, publisher, author, two-time podcaster. She's also a six-time best-selling author of When She Stopped Asking Why. Please welcome Marsha Van, Van Weinberg. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. That's a mouthful, but I love it. It's like, it almost sounds German and I'm, I'm German. So I was like, okay, we're kind of parallel, but we are. We are. Uh, Thank you so much for having me here. I'm, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, I, you have all the things just like living your life in your own purpose and doing whatever your heart calls you to do, you know? And I think it, people just fascinate me when they don't allow any like self-limiting beliefs to stop them from going after what they should do. But I'm very interested in hearing like what a storytelling NLP trainer is. I love that you asked and mentioned about self-limiting beliefs because we all have them. And I believe it was a lot of my self-limiting beliefs that led me down to do the work that I do. So I never pretend that I didn't struggle with them as well. Um, Storytelling, I have been immersed in the world of stories and knowing that our stories connect us to each other. And as humans, that's literally like we're connected by experiences and emotions and challenges. And a lot of the stories that we're so afraid of anyone ever knowing about are the things that actually connect us to each other. We are so much more relatable when we can learn to do that. So it was through my own stories that I was really went down that path. And then the last two and a half, three years, I really dove into NLP and I actually, I know there's a lot of different ways that NLP is taught, but for me personally, I really learned a lot about healing and changing limiting beliefs and the power of my thoughts. And for me, it was the missing piece. I really had muscled my way through a lot of challenges for a lot of years that I didn't take the time to slow down, actually heal, go through some of the process and work that I needed to do, and then be able to support others with that. So storytelling NLP, I help people to learn how to put their stories together, be able to speak, write the book, share the story. And then as well with the NLP piece, be able to understand what that story means and how to help ourselves to heal through that story. That's pretty powerful. It's, it's, and it, thank you. I really feel that it is. And it's the processes that I've had to walk in order to learn it. So it's been a journey, um, learning how to own my own story, share my own story, use my voice as well as take the time to heal, to work through this. Yeah. I was reading your bio on your website and you've, um, gone through some struggles yourself. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I I was a parent who dealt with teen substance abuse, mental health, a lot of challenges. And that story really kept me quiet and hidden for a long time. And it was through that process that I really started to understand the power of shame and what shame was doing. And as I slowly with a long story, but as I slowly started to put myself out there and share my story, I was blown away by how many people would come back to me and say, that's my story. I've been told a soul for 40 years or 50 years. And it it just blew me away to see so many people living and letting shame guide them in their life. And it became a fuel to keep going. And as I kept going, it just kept growing. And I really deep down believe it's our stories that connect us to each other. Absolutely. 1000%. And I can't even imagine what you went through going, you know, dealing with that and trying to get out of it, let alone trying to help your kids get out of that because, you know, you're, you're a mother, but you're like, you're kind of helpless in that situation. Extremely helpless. And it's, and it, I mean, it's definitely been, I don't want anyone to see it as like a big jump. And it was like, all of a sudden here I am speaking. It's been a decade. It's been a lot of work. And yes, as a mom, like the one thing about your podcast, um, Dana label free for me was that I had to really, I had to change the meaning of what I thought a mom was. I mean, I actually carried a tremendous amount of guilt thinking that I'd screwed up. This was my fault. 
until I hit a point of recognizing, you know, that my role and my definition of what I thought my role was had to change. And because if I didn't, I wasn't going to come out of this alive. And I'm not sure that I, I don't know where we would be if I hadn't started to create some change, even just for myself. And then at the same time, helping us to rebuild relationships with our kids too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's what prompted you to become an NLP trainer and, you know, be speaker, publisher, and author. Yes. I started um, in 2015 sharing on stages, small stages, sharing collaborative chapters. And around 2016, I had the pull to write my own book. And I remember, you know, when you, if you are a person who has those downloads, I'm like, okay, it's time to write my own book. I'm ready. I'm so excited. And I go to tell my family and nobody thinks it's a good idea. Of course. Right. And, yeah. and I, I <laughs> And here's the thing is that, you know, you have to be able to be convicted to what you want to do and what's important. And so many times we stop ourselves because we're like, well, others don't believe in us or, and it doesn't matter because if we don't believe in our ourselves first, then we can't get that validation from someone else. And so I'm so grateful that although it was very isolating and very scary to write that book, I shared my book is from my perspective as a parent. What do you do when the plan doesn't go according to plan, which is literally always. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. (laughs) It never does. (laughs) It does not. (laughs) But once you wrote the book and you put it out there, didn't that feel very liberating and it's cathartic in a way, right? Very liberating, very cathartic. And it opened up the doors to all the work that I get to do today. Like it really had a very big purpose. And I named it when she stopped asking why, because the why was the thing that was killing me. And when we're stuck in a very difficult story, so many of us are stuck in the why for so long and the yeah. why is never going to be like the why is the why only works Simon Sinek the why only works when you are working towards a goal and you have that in mind but if you're standing in a space and asking why about all of your past that it just keeps you stuck as a victim and it doesn't yeah. change anything so for me I shifted from why to what every time I said why it was like no the why doesn't matter let's focus on what like what can I do because that's an action word yeah. And that's really the premise of the book is there's a lot of things that happen in our lives that are outside of our control. We get to decide how we respond to that. Absolutely. I like to think of it. So I used to be a, like a why, why, why is this happening to me? But now yeah. I look at what is the lesson I need to learn here? You know, like instead of being like that, woe is me, you know, cry me a river. It's like, okay, so what is my lesson? And I, I welcome challenges now because it's like there, it's an opportunity to grow right and to get become better and to um just learn another lesson or gain more wisdom for whatever it is that you're going through so i love that i i definitely align with the the reason why you wrote the book yeah it definitely it's it was an eye-opener for me and it it's it's something that i still use to this day and when i'm in that space it's like no no don't focus on the why focus on the what And so when people say, where do I start when it comes to a space of like, how do I own my story? And honestly, if you're stuck in a victim mindset, don't shame yourself for doing that because that's not going to solve anything. But I do believe that's the first step. You have to be able to shift out of a victim mindset to be able to see what is this doing for me? Like it's, it's really hard when you're in a difficult time to say, and some people will say, well, this is happening for you. And I remember somebody actually said that to me at the time. And I'm like, really for me, like this is who would ask for this. Yeah. So I don't actually like those, those words, especially if a person is in crisis, right? Like we don't, that's really not necessary, but I do believe everything is teaching us something. And I do believe that we are learning and growing into the people that we're meant to become. And I think that if I am here to talk about shame stories, difficult stories, how to overcome them, I have to walk it first. That's the, we, I, I don't think we can teach and coach and mentor on anything we haven't lived. It's yeah. just not authentic. I totally agree. Yeah. So when you started getting into training or being, I mean, not you consider training or coaching people kind of the, a little bit of the same, or do you think those are two different things? 
Um, I, that's interesting. I, I think that it's an umbrella and I think okay. there's a lot of parts to that umbrella. And when I work with clients, I, I look at it as I think it's coaching. It's more of a relationship as opposed yeah. to, I'm going to tell you what to do next. I actually don't, I don't align with that at all. I think that as a coach or a mentor or trainer, your job is to help people to see their blind spots and help them to work and move past them, but also not to tell them what to do, but to empower them that they can make some of those changes. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that uh, differentiation. Um, So what does your client, like an ideal client look like for you? An ideal client is, and I can think of a few of them right now, they come in with a very, sometimes very vulnerable, difficult, challenging story. They have this gut feeling of, I think I could do something with this. Like, I want to do something good. I want to put some good out into the world. And I don't exactly know what that's going to look like. And for a few of them, it might be writing a book. It might be building a coaching business. It might be starting the podcast, sharing a story. And for some people, it might be like, where do I even start? How do I see this story differently? And so that I can recognize that, you know, it's shaped me into the person that shaped them into the person that they are that day. And at that time, and I think that's the thing, right? Is that we can't, we can't love who we are and hate every single aspect that made us who we are because everything we walk through makes us who we are, whether we like it or not. So those are my ideal clients. They're like, I want to do something good with this. And they also want to be that source of support that maybe they wish they would have had maybe, you know, two years, five years ago. And, and I think that's the beautiful thing is that we all have lessons and things that we can share with others. And usually it's a younger version of ourselves. Yeah. I love that you are empowering voices around stories that have impacted their lives and to pull out the positive um, the positive, positive, like outcome of that. Cause you know, I think people's stories are so powerful, especially if they've been through a lot, because you have so many diamonds of wisdom and things that you can offer people that are perhaps going through something similar and Mm -hmm. to share that story could possibly save a life, you know? It honestly could. And I, and I think of that is, I know it's scary. I know it's scary and I've done that as well. But I often think back to like, I wish, you know, back in 2014, nobody was talking about this. Nobody was talking about these kinds of stories. Everything was very curated and it looked perfect. And for me personally, as I started to share my voice and message, I'm going to say the obvious in a sense that I didn't fit the mold of what you thought a parent looked like who was dealing with this, which meant it was even more important for me to show up and speak because we need to break those molds. We have to change the molds and the labels that this only affects certain people. It's not true at all. It's not even close to the truth. Yeah, no, not at all. Do you have a success story? I'm sure you have plenty, but one of your favorite success stories that you can share with us that uh, would resonate with people that are listening. Yes. um, I'm going to share that in, I started my podcast in 2017 In late 2018, I started to notice that there were downloads happening in Africa And I thought, that's interesting. And sure enough, I had somebody reach out and connect. She was in her young 20s, um, Thambeka, if you happen to hear this. Mm -hmm. And we connected on Zoom. We started to connect on a regular basis. And she was a survivor. She made it very clear. She was a survivor, not a victim of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And she really wanted to come to a space of learning how to share her story. And so we spent time supporting each other through Zoom. And in 2019, I decided to put together a collaborative book called Own Your Choices to put stories together from women around the world. And I reached out and I'm like, we would love to have your story in the book. And she was like, I'm a student. I can't afford to, you know, buy a chapter. And we did a GoFundMe and we raised the money and we were able to get her story published and we shipped all her books to Africa. And she openly speaks on human trafficking and she speaks as a survivor and has big dreams of speaking at the UN. She's an incredible human. She started a foundation. And then it's like literally just from, she picked up a podcast and it went this way. And I think that's the thing. The other thing too, is that our stories can go so much further than we ever, ever could imagine. Yeah. And that just bring me, bring me to tears. I'm also a survivor of human trafficking. So I know what that means to her. So um, I can really 
resonate with that. Mm -hmm. So what is the name of your podcast, Marsha? (laughs) (laughs) It is is called Own Your Choices, Own Your Life. And I mean, those words probably saved my life back in, in, you know, seven, seven, eight years ago, because I had to shift from trying to fix, manage, control everyone to recognize what are my choices? What can I take responsibility for? And what is not mine to own? And so own your choices, own your life was like a no brainer for me. And I still look at it five years later and go, yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how many people that don't own their own choices. Um, And then there's, even if they're like, let's just, I know of plenty in my life that I've never really had any significant trauma but yeah. they still love to stay in the victim mode and just like they don't want to own any of their choices and it's really discouraging especially when you are close to them if it's family right and you are growing as a person and you're supposed to be taking all the blame for everything that happens to them and it, yeah. it's just it sucks i'm sorry but it sucks <laughs> it does suck it's it's and it's interesting though as you continue to heal and grow yeah. um and move you start to consciously see it differently, right? Like you can start to see it. And I think of all of the the fights, the the challenges that we used to have, I just don't react the same way now. And I can see that I'm a different person, even to the point where sometimes um, family or extended family or friends will say like, wow, like that's all you got. You don't have any like rebuttal or argument back. And I'm like, no, it's not my problem to fight. It's not my, I'm not taking that on because you know what? It's, probably one of the number one questions I get is how do I change them? You don't, you don't. And that's a really hard thing to come to terms with, but you don't understand. I'm like, I do understand, but you don't, it's not your job to change other people. It's your job to lead yourself so that you can be the example. And that if people want to change, they will, but you can't, you know, you can be a guiding post for people, but your job is not to push them people through the push and pull people through life. That's right. not, that doesn't work. That's no. not long lasting change. No, not at all. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in that. Like you, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Like that's been, uh-huh. that thing's been around forever. And that is true to today that you can, people are going to do what they want to do on their own time. I mean, even like friends that, you know, I'm sure, you know, women that have been in really bad relationships and yes. you can tell them until you're blue in the face, but until they're ready, they're going to stay in that relationship. But, and they know that they shouldn't be in it, but they're just not ready until they're ready. Yeah. And they will keep going back until they hit a point, like they'll, they'll ask for help and then they'll go back and they'll yeah. ask for help and go back and zero shame attached to that. It's just an observation that it's until you decide that you deserve something different in your life. And I had to do that. Like I had to decide that this is not what my life is going to look like. Um, and learning to do that and still like love my kids, love my situation, but also know that it wasn't mine to fix or manage or control. And that's a, it's a tough life lesson. And I'm actually grateful because I think it's one of the best lessons I've ever learned. It probably saved me because I think if I hadn't changed my ways, I'm not sure if I would have made it this far. Yeah. Wow. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have. On that note, where can people find you, support you, buy your book, listen to your podcast, all that great stuff. Amazing. Um, I've made it very easy because I have a very long last name. So it, <laughs> everything is Marsha Van W. So everything, social media, website is Marsha Van W. And my books are there. It's all able, like able to access me from there. And my podcast is Own Your Choices, Own Your Life. And the second podcast I have is Everybody Holds a Story because literally we are walking stories, right? Our yeah. bodies are, and the reason that that podcast is so close to home and important is because I kept working through the steps of, but this is how you own your story. This is what you do. But then I really started to see that, you know what, sometimes we can't, well, not sometimes we can't just think our way to change the story. Sometimes we have a lot of trap trauma for yeah. in our bodies that we've carried for a long time. So I really believe that everybody does hold a story. Yeah. Totally agree with you. On that note, you guys, I'm going to put all of Marsha's links in the show notes. So don't hesitate to reach out, click those links, listen to her podcast, follow it, go buy a book. We are all here to support you and give you great resources. So you know you want to go check her out. Uh, Marsha, this is the part of the show where I like to ask for less words of wisdom or advice. What would you like to leave with us today? 
what I would love to leave with you today is that if you are, I want you to know that your story is big enough. It is valuable enough. It's important enough. And that someone somewhere is always praying for the solutions that you're holding on to. So if you found your way through a door, please don't let that door slam on the person behind you. How can you find a way to be able to show up, be vulnerable, share more of yourself so that we can continue that impact and that ripple? Mic drop. My gosh, she just gave me goosebumps everywhere. I'm like, ah, that was beautiful. Marsha, well, it's been such an honor to have you on the show. Thank you so much for sharing your story and how you are helping your story change the lives of others to be better, more impactful and more making that positive change around the world. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. Honestly, I love the conversation. It was great. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, rate, review, comment, share, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.